learn about the loss of ossification. Before we learn about the loss of ossification, let's try to recall what exactly is the meaning of primary center of ossification and what is the meaning of secondary center of ossification. So what exactly is primary center and what exactly is secondary center? Remember, primary center gives rise to diaphysis. Primary center gives rise to diaphysis, whereas secondary center gives rise to epiphysis. This is the definition of primary center of ossification and secondary center of ossification. Appearance and fusion of these ossification centers follow certain rules and such rules are referred to as loss of ossification. Now let's see the first rule or first law of ossification. The first law of ossification says that the primary centers appear, primary centers appear before birth, they appear before birth and usually are single. So primary centers as a rule always appear before birth and are usually single. Now there are some exceptions. Now what are the exceptions? Remember the exceptions to this rule are the carpal bones and tarsal bones. The centers for carpal bones and tarsal bones appear after birth. Then, when we talk about clavicle, clavicle has two primary centers of ossification. So, these are the exceptions for the first rule of ossification. Right. Now, let's see the second rule. The second rule says that the secondary centers, right, the secondary centers of ossification as a rule appear after birth. They appear after birth birth. Now, what are the examples for such rule? So, again, we have exceptions, right? What are the exceptions? Remember, the lower end of femur. So, we have lower end of femur and then we have upper end of tibia. For both of these bones, the secondary centers or the epiphysis appears just before birth. The appearance of lower end of the femur in an x-ray suggests that the child is viable or the child was capable of independent existence. Right. So, this is regarding the first two rules. Then, what about the third rule? The third rule or third law of ossification says that the secondary centers, secondary centers that appear first Secondary centers that appear first will fuse last. So, secondary centers that appear first will always fuse last. Now, again, the exception for this rule is the fibula. Right? How? We will learn when we see one more law of ossification related to fibula. Right? Then what about the next law? The fourth law of ossification says that secondary centers fuse first, secondary centers fuse first and then they fuse with, and then they fuse with diaphysis or shaft. Now, what do we mean by this? When we have multiple secondary centers, more than one secondary center of ossification, these secondary centers fuse first and then it will fuse with the shaft of the bone. This is the law. Now, again, exception. Now, what is the exception for this rule? Remember, it is the femur again. Now, we have the head, ossification center for greater trochanter, and ossification for lesser trochanter. All of these are separate ossification centers. If we apply this law, the head, greater trochanter and lesser trochanter should fuse first and then they should fuse with the diaphysis or shaft of the femur. But this does not happen. The head of the femur, greater trochanter and lesser trochanter ossification center, they fuse separately with the shaft of the femur. Right. Then what about the next rule or next law of ossification? Right. Remember, the secondary centers for, secondary centers for, Pressure epiphysis, secondary centers for pressure epiphysis appear first, they appear first compared to 
appear first compared to secondary centers for secondary centers for traction epiphysis now what do we mean by this if a bone is forming joint if the epiphysis is forming joint the secondary center for that particular epiphysis will appear first compared to traction epiphysis which is produced by pull of the muscle now i said the third rule of ossification says that the appearance of secondary centers of ossification right the secondary centers which appear first will fuse last fibula actually violates this law of ossification so what happens here centers that appear first will fuse first right so this is because of this fifth rule the secondary center for pressure epiphysis appear first now secondary center for pressure epiphysis in case of fibula is its lower end which appears first but that will fuse first with the shaft of the fibula why this is because the upper end of the fibula is the growing end and remember the upper end should always fuse last with the shaft right so this is the reason why fibula is said to violate the law of union of epiphysis and this is what we refer to as law of union of epiphysis right so these are regarding the first five laws of ossification then the sixth law of ossification is related to the direction of nutrient foramen the direction of nutrient foramen so remember direction of the nutrient foramen is always away from the growing end is always away from growing end of the bone away from the growing end of the bone what do we mean by this now here in the image you have the image of a fetus let's see the direction of nutrient foramen of the bones present in the limbs in case of upper limb they are directed towards the elbow right whereas in case of the lower limb they are directed away from the knee joint so what do i mean by this when we take the humerus bone the direction of the nutrient foramen is towards the elbow or towards the lower end right so what does it mean the upper end of the humerus is the growing end right then when we talk about the direction of nutrient foramen in radius or ulna the direction of the nutrient foramen is towards the elbow what does this suggest the growing end for radius and ulna are their lower end right similarly when we talk about the femur tibia or fibula the direction of nutrient foramen in case of femur is directed away from the knee joint towards the upper end right that suggests that the lower end of the femur is actually the growing end whereas in case of tibia and fibula the direction of the nutrient foramen is towards the lower end which suggests that the upper end is the growing end right so this is what the law of direction of nutrient foramen says direction of nutrient foramen is always away from the growing end and this can be remembered by the mnemonic to the elbow i go to the elbow i go and from the knee i flee from the knee i flee so this is the mnemonic or the sentence to remember the direction of nutrient foramen and which of the ends of the bones are the growing ends right so this is regarding the law of direction of nutrient foramen now one hypothesis regarding why the direction of nutrient foramen is away from the growing end is the growing end seems to be little bit hypoxic and hypoxia is one of the potent stimulator of growth right and that is why it is said that the ends that are away from the or opposite to the direction of the nutrient foramen are hypoxic and hence show better growth right so this is one hypothesis for this statement right so this is regarding the sixth law of ossification right now once we have learned these laws of ossification in detail let's quickly summarize 
we said the first law of ossification says that the primary centers as a rule appear before birth and are usually single and we learned the exceptions for this secondary centers of ossification appear before birth and again we saw the exceptions in case of lower end of the femur and upper end of the tibia secondary centers of ossification that appear first fuses last fibula violates this law secondary centers that fuse first secondary centers fuse first and then they fuse with diaphysis the upper end of the femur violates this law because the head greater trochanter and lesser trochanter all of them do not fuse together but fuse separately with the diaphysis the secondary centers for pressure epiphysis appear first than traction epiphysis centers and this is the reason why the secondary ossification center that appears first in fibula fuses first then the direction of nutrient foramen is always away from the growing end which can be remembered by the mnemonic to the elbow i go and from the knee i flee